there are four major castes in the Hindu system that developed as Hinduism was developing. Four major castes. The first is Brahman. The Brahman are the priestly caste. They are the top caste. They are the ones who provide the priestly, the spiritual leadership for, for the whole Indian system, the Brahmans. The next level are the Kshatriyas. the Kshatriya caste. And the Kshatriya are the rulers and the warriors. The rulers and the warriors. The Kshatriya caste. The next level are the Vaisyas. The Vaisya caste. And they are the merchants, the businessmen, the Vaisya caste. And then you have the Sudras. And they are the farmer caste, the ones who till the earth, provide the food for the society, the Sudra caste. And so the caste system in India is grounded in four major castes. The priests, Brahman, the Kshatriya, the uh, rulers, and the, um, and the warriors, the Vaisyas, who are the merchants, the traders, the business community, and the Sudras, the, Sudras, the farming community, these four major castes. And you cannot tamper with the caste. Now, I'm thinking of classical, not modern secular Hinduism, but classical Hinduism says that these castes are actually Brahman. So the caste system and Brahman, which is divine soul, are one. This is autocratic theology, philosophy, uh, at its best, you could say, which we talked about earlier on in our sessions. That you, if, if this system itself is divine, then there's no way you could ever transform it or change it, you know. It is, it is fixed within divinity itself. The caste system and Brahman are one. They're one. They have oneness. And as we look further, we will see the way in which the various doctrines and theologies of Hinduism uh, coalesce in ways that do support the caste system, uh, keep it uh, sacrosanct. Now, that is not to say that there's not reform movements within India. There are many reform movements seeking to address some of the evils of the caste system, um, some of the uh, exploitation in it, and so forth and so forth. There's a lot of concern about that. But you're really swimming against the theology, you could say, when all is Brahman and Brahman is caste. Now, you also have many, many uh, Thousands of other castes as well, subcastes, which are called jati, 50,000 jatis. But these jati subcastes are all within this overall arching system. So among the Brahman castes, there's many, many subcastes, which are called jati. Within the Sudha uh, farmer castes, there are many, many subcastes, which are called jati. So everyone in India, in the Hindu experience, has his place. Uh, within the overarching large caste systems, the four major the four major groups, you know, but within those four major groups, 
you have these thousands of other subcasts called jati. And then you have another level two, which are called the delete. The delete. The delete are persons, are, are, are systems that are outcasts. They've fallen out of the system. They're not within the system anymore. How did they fall out of the system? Well, could happen for any one of many reasons. One of the reasons is perhaps uh, intermarriage between two castes, which the caste system doesn't tolerate. And so if, uh, if someone is uh, born out of, uh, from a couple who are two different castes, which is going against uh, violating the caste system, why that, that would mean that the progeny, the, the child would become outcast, doesn't belong in any caste at all. So you have, you have something like 200 million outcasts within the Hindu system, people who've fallen out of the system. We hear today in India about a very rapid church growth in many parts of India. Much of the church growth is actually from the delete, you know, because in the church they're finding a home, a place, which the caste system excluded them from. Um, so it becomes, the church becomes an umbrella welcoming these outcast peoples uh, into the fellowship of the church. Um, and some as well become, become Muslims, likewise, because Islam also resists the caste system. And so Dalit may also find uh, Islam as an alternative uh, from the caste system, which they find helpful in finding a place within Indian society because they become part of the Ummah, the Muslim community, the Ummah. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com. The goal of Hinduism is to get off this cycle of birth and rebirth. That's what it's about. So next week, as we further examine Hinduism, we will look at ways in which Hinduism attempts to offer a way to get off this cycle of birth and rebirth. And there's two terms you need to keep in mind as we talk about that. The one is mukti. And the other is moksha. Mukti and moksha. What could mukti be? Mukti means enlightenment. Enlightenment about what? Ah, the enlightenment of realizing that all is Brahman. Really, all is Brahman. The enlightenment of realizing that my personhood, my personhood is an illusion. I think I'm David W. Schenck. That's an illusion because all is Brahman. The only reality is Brahman. And so if I think I'm somehow a distinctive phenomenon, <laughs> if I think I am a person, uh, somehow not that prevents me from receiving um, uh, enlightenment. So enlightenment is the realization that all is truly, truly Brahman. That's mukti. And there's all kinds of devices and theologies and practices that Hinduism brings into the experience of the person as a, contri as a contribution to help them learn that truly, truly, they are only Brahman, only universal soul, not an individual being. That's mukti. And when you acquire mukti, then you are ready for moksha. What's moksha? Ladies and gentlemen, moksha is release from the cycle of samsara. So you're going round and round and round and round and round, and you get mukti, a realization that I am that I'm one with the universal Brahman. When that realization really dawns upon you, has really gripped you, whoops, off you go. And you escape the cycle of samsara. And then what happens 
when you escape the cycle of samsara, you become absorbed into the universal Brahman like a drop of water becomes absorbed into the ocean. You as an individual are no more. You have simply merged with the universal Brahman. So you and the universal Brahman have become one. And so there's no more reincarnations for you. You're now released from the wheel of samsara. And that's what Hinduism is about.